and welcome to the Diana Felzone Show here on Pal Talk. Hope all of you are having a wonderful day. I know my day just got a little brighter because my friend James, who also does my hair, <laughs> and might I just say James Corbett is like a magical maven of coloring because you took magical me maven of coloring. <laughs> alliteration day. It's alliteration day. Um, you took my dark, dark hair into this beautiful auburn color where people are like, oh my god, are you naturally a redhead? I'm like, no, but my grandmother was. <laughs> so I'm just emulating. <laughs> so, kind of so kind of, like in a third generational way, yes. Um, but James is here today uh, from the James Corbett studio. You guys can check that out right now online. Um, because he started a wonderful nonprofit organization to help women who are afflicted with cancer and have gone through radiation or chemotherapies that have left them without their hair and not being able to use certain kind of products on their face. And the organization is called Hair to Health. That is hair, H-A-I-R, two, like the number, and help.com, two. And uh, James will uh, uh, James will have all that information up, which will be coming on a hyperlink. There you go, yeah. right now. HairToHelp.org is the link that you guys can check out. So James, first of all, let's get right into this organization and also we're going to get into winter hair trends and fashion and makeup and everything later, but I really want to talk about your amazing new venture. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, as you know, it's something that's very passionate to me and um, unfortunately cancer affects um, one in three people in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, so. I always knew I wanted to do something to give back. It's great being in the service industry because really it's just a matter of giving your time to a certain extent. Um, and I was at a nonprofit event which was a once a year thing for battered women. And I thought, wow, what a great thing if we did this same kind of idea for cancer patients. But what we're doing that's different is it's not just a once a year thing. I'm trying to build a continual program that is once a month to start out with and eventually hopefully bi-monthly to even once a week where we um, help people with cancer and their primary caregivers because a lot of the times people mm -hmm. forget about the person that's taking care of the sick person wow. and um, we invite them into the spa and we give them a day at the spa for free we do their hair their nails we give them reflexology acupuncture massage and the amazing thing how this has been growing, Diana, is that um, you can't discourse, uh, discount somebody how they feel mm -hmm. on the outside, but then we actually started realizing that the reflexology that we were doing was garnering these patients two weeks immediate relief from neuropathy. Wow. And so it's a really passionate program of mine that I want to really grow this program to a nationwide, maybe even international. Um, status or different salons and spas throughout the country will be participating in Hair to Help programs. What I think is interesting is that when you think about a woman's hair, it's her, her crowning glory. That's what they always said, you know, don't cut your hair because that's your power. That's what some women have said to me when I've thought about chopping it all off. And to lose your hair to cancer is something that really affects women in a profound way and maybe to someone out there they'd say oh considering that you know they're going through such a, a, a you know a trial and, and, and tribulation in their life that hair is just secondary but it's not it's really really important that somebody take care of their external because it affects their internal and I think you're you're really offering them amazing therapy treatments like reflexology. You're giving them the chance to feel like a woman again and not a woman with cancer. Because a lot of the time, I think that that big C trumps who they used to be. And they just feel like they're a walking cancer sign rather than being the woman that they were and are. Right, and it's not really just necessarily just for women. We treat men as well. Mm -hmm. It's just immediately everyone thinks beauty women. But men certainly can benefit from all sorts of the services that we offer as well. Um, but yeah, Diana, you really touched on it because um, we were just at the Hope Lodge, which is the American Cancer Society's uh, uh, kind of like a dormitory, Ronald McDonald House, oh, wow. if you will, for adults and the cancer patients. Um, and we were visiting with some of them yesterday, and that's exactly what they were saying, that they lose the human touch, that they forget about the person mm -hmm. that's behind there. And we're offering them a time out. One of the women said to me, at the end of the last day that we did, she said, today I don't feel like I have cancer. Thank you. Mm. 
So if I can do that for somebody for one day, then that's a pretty amazing thing. And that's HairToHelp.org. And in addition to having uh, this this nonprofit ongoing, James and his studio is actually doing an event. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that yeah, for the Tri-State area? Yeah, we're doing an event. Uh, it'll be in November, Sunday, November 13th, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And it's um, we're going to invite kids to come into the spa and they're going to make get well cards for cancer patients oh. of the Hope Lodge. And then we're going to be offering little mini cuts and pretty princess manicures with a non-toxic nail polish line that we have and um, accepting donations instead of payment for the services to help fund a cancer patient. Wow, that is awesome. And uh, anyone that has children in the Tri-State area, they can bring them over to the James Corbett studio and you guys can attend on November 13th. And all that information, I believe, is on HairToHealth.org? It is, and Time Out New York Kids is going to be listing it in their November issue as Great. well. So there's lots of, um, but definitely visit um, www.hair2help.org mm -hmm. for information or James Corbett, C-O-R-B-E-T-T -T, studio com and either one of those will have more information on that. Awesome. Well, let's get into the nitty-gritty because as we all know, when the seasons are changing, so must your hair. Well, sort of. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what the winter hair trends are, James. And for anyone out there, you know how it works at Pal Talk. If you want to participate, if you have a question, if maybe you're just not sure what to do with your own look, you can ask James. He is our expert here. You can raise your Pal Talk hands. Gary will put you through if you have a mic, you will talk directly to us. If you don't have a mic, that's fine. You can just text in your questions, which we will read aloud and answer ASAP. So James, in terms of hair trends, what are you seeing? Well, the ombre effect is still really, really big yeah, and going still, strong. That's like a year, um, year Rachel over a year. Bilson is been rocking it out lately and I'm having lots of clients uh, still come in and ask for it. Julia Roberts as well. Um, but the interesting thing that we're seeing this winter adding on to the ombre effect is also kind of like there's more people like you came to me that one time wanting purple mm -hmm. highlights um there's more people that are wanting to experience see so you're ahead of the trend diana um there's more people that are wanting to experience that um i think just like in the runways how you have haute couture yeah and it gets down to the street level what you actually see in the stores so think like Katy perry think rihanna with this crazy pink with Katy perry on the cover of in style or rihanna that's been rocking out this really bright candy apple red color um people are coming in now and starting to ask for a little bitty pieces of that maybe on the ends or the tips not all over like like the celebrities are doing but just a little bit of tips um, Julia Roberts has been seen rocking that out lately with a little bit of an ombre effect and some faded out like red on her ends. But it's a really pastel -y, faded out kind of, already looks like it's been worn in look rather than something that's really um, strong and pronounced. And I have two questions about that because number one, the ombre effect for people who are not aware is exactly what, James? Um, well, the ombre <laughs> effect is basically where... Um, Ombre is a term that we use for um, fashion as well as hair is when it gets darker and then lighter down, uh, towards the bottom of the hair. So basically it's about, um, I call them the recessionistas highlights because they started <laughs> up from there down. And then you can play with different colors. I don't know. I'm not really a fan of the paler kind of washed out look. I like things to be vibrant and fresh. And if you're going to do pink, you go pink. You know, you don't mess around. At least that's what I like. That's just me. Right, totally. I mean, and then that's the great thing about the trend is that, you know, if you want to be really bold and bright like Katy Perry, Rihanna, you can do it. Or if there's that woman out there that's starting to flirt with it a little bit that, um, you know, she too can wear that and still feel that she can get away with wearing it to the office. Now are we still, I know Auburn seems to be a look that a lot of women do in the fall, like they like the vibrant reds. Is that less this fall? Or are you not getting as many requests at your salon? I'm um, seeing a lot of blonde. Really? A lot of blonde, a lot of icy, <sighs> wanting to go for the dramatic, the extreme kind, yeah. of, kind of thing. And the feathers are uh, were big this summer, and I think they're still going to be in uh, during the winter as well. Yeah, no, it seems to be where um, uh, the feathers are, n are not going anywhere. My mother told me that I couldn't do the feathers. She's like, honey, <laughs> when that... Lucy was, said no feathers? My mom said no feathers. She was like, honey, I just think that that's a particular look, and... 
I think it's been done so much that it would just be like you're following the trends, and I don't think that's what you want to do. I was well, like, okay. There you have it from Lucy. There you go. I was like, all right, mom, no, no feathers for me. She's like, yeah, I know. I was like, okay, okay. So you're seeing a lot of like cooler shades, which is surprising because usually people like to warm up their their shades or their colors during the winter months, but that's something we're we're kind of leaving. Not necessarily. I mean, you know, you're always going to have it. The way that I always say is that there's no rules. It's what you feel comfortable with right. and what looks great on you. But I do think, though, that the ombre is going to be continue to be stronger and stronger, especially as the economy, you know, is still, uh, you know, not, not really that great yet. So um, it's a lot easier because you can wear that for months and not have to worry about getting it touched up. Yeah, but you almost have to be okay with that dirty root look. Well, there's I a see, way of doing it so it doesn't look like dirty root. Because I see like this much, I'm like, James, oh my <laughs> god, I have to come and look dirty. That's just that's just my own personal afflictions, which we'll talk about with maybe a therapist at a later time. Um, but also going into extensions and things like that. Are those still huge? Are women still wanting long hair? Is it look shorter? Is it, you know, what's going on? Because I need to know. Um, well, you know, <laughs> I always say my biggest thing is go with clip-ins because the piece-by-piece -piece extensions take hours and hours to do. They cost thousands of dollars. Who's Most people that? don't know how to do it correctly because they put way too much hair in, in one certain section. You look like... A Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, or one of these people that looks like they're 90 when they're really 40. Um, oh, did I say that? Sorry. Um, but it's too much food. Botox too soon. Exactly. That's but, all. you know, I think clip-ins are great and they're fun because that way you can clip in some pieces and have long hair for a bit and take it out and then have shorter hair and you keep them and you hang on to them and you take really good care of them and they'll last for for a really long time. Yeah, that's probably a good idea too. And also with, if you wanted to experiment with colors, if you did want to do like a pink streak or a purple streak, you can actually get those clip-ins, which you have at your salon too, that are like the bright reds or whatever you want. And actually one of your um, assistants at the salon had it in her hair. And I was like, whoa, did you dye your hair like red at the bottom? She's like, no, it's a clip-in. She's like, so much better for your hair and it keeps it more organic and it's just a healthier all together. So, oh, I think Which is good. a great tip out there. Thank you from oh, Diana. From, I learned. That, you I know, learned. I paid exactly attention. that. If you're not comfortable, you're not sure about trying out that trend, you can just go and get a little clip in. Uh, Sally Beauty Supplies around the country, they've got great little ones that are already on the clips and you can put them in your hair and you can curl them and flat iron them and everything or try your local beauty supply. Um, or a salon, they may have them as well. Now, what about um, certain kind of straightening treatments? Keratin is still going. Keratin is still going. This is the big thing with keratin, and this is the big thing that I always say to people. They have not come up with the technology yet. They're trying to say that they have. They have not come up with the technology yet that it is formaldehyde free. Mm -hmm. It is basically saying something contains equal, but it doesn't contain saccharin. It's the same thing. Whether it's propylene glycol, formaldehyde, unaldehyde, it all happens to be the same thing. Well, thank you for joining us today. It's thank you for having me. Awesome. And thank you, everybody out there. I just personally want to say how proud I am of you for doing Hair to Help and people out there, hairtohelp.org, and helping all those women who just need to feel. And you can go to the website in. and donate any nomination that you want. There's a widget on there that you can uh, donate. I know it's not fun to be talking about cancer and not talking about the trends, but one in three people, odds are, pretty good chance you'll be affected by it in your lifetime. Yeah, and, and thank you for being here. And we will have you back, I hope, for um, I some hope of the so. holiday trends. Holiday too. trends. And New Year's. Oh gosh, New Year up. resolution for your Happy look. Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween, Halloween to looks. early. <laughs> for sure. All right, guys, we will see you in about a week's time. Thank you for joining us here on the Diana Falzone Show on PalZoc.com. Thanks, James. Thanks, Laura.